Welcome to the Save Sci-Fi Podcast with me, your host, Grin. Today, we have co-host Michael. How's it going, Michael? Very good, very good. And our guest for today is Danny Danes, also known as DC Danes, the author of The Star Crystal. Are you there, Dane? Danes? Hey, mate, how are you? <laughs> so, what do I call you? Do I call <laughs> you me Danny? I'll call you D. Hey, what's up, D? You can call me DCD. D C D. My wife calls me a lot of other things. And they start with D, but <laughs> not allowed to repeat them on air. <laughs> so, uh this this podcast is just three guys talking about science fiction stuff and getting to know you and find find out about your book and the whole works. So I you sent me your book and um yes. I got it like two days ago and I gotta say I only had time to read the first few pages. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was so excited to read it and and I I just wasn't able to get down and read it. If I had that physical book, I'd probably be able to like take it with me wherever I go. <clears throat> Excuse yeah, me. unfortunately, uh, post doesn't work on a two day period. <laughs> and, it wouldn't and be you, good. And you guys don't have uh you don't have uh you you're where are you? Be, okay, before we get into all that stuff, first, uh, tell us what is the star crystal okay pretty much the star crystal sort of uh it's it started as a voice in my head when i was um at work <laughs> um 34th birthday and i got st- uh, stuck in a um confined space <laughs> a big drum heating oven actually and i've just freaked out got all claustrophobic and just gone um holy crap 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 Grabbed the phone, phoned the guy I was working with at the time and said, dude, I know we've only been here 15 minutes, but I seriously need a break. And um, I'm all freaking out and just like, oh, my God, there's got to be more to life than, you know, this every day. And as I'm walking out there, um, this voice just starts in my head and it's just like, before, before there was dust, before the air became poison, before the companies... Our people lived and lived in peace. That's um, right from the first part of the book. That's yeah, the, very, the opening that, of the that's, book. And that's it great. just kept going. <laughs> by the time awesome. I got out, by the time I got out to morning tea, um, it was just this whole prologue in my head. So I wrote it down in my little black book, as I call it, my little diary. Um, Fifteen minutes, I got the prologue and. Um, got home that night, typed it up, and thought, "Wow, this is actually not too bad." Um, took it to work the next day and showed my mate, and he goes, "Geez, this is actually quite good." Um, and then throughout the day, I could start seeing the guy that was, you know, pushing his voice onto me, and you know what he was doing and where he was going, and and yeah, pretty much after that, I sort of tried writing; it didn't work, um, and then I just let the the guy talk to me again. Um, I call him the teller. Um, as in teller, um, a lot of my characters have been named after what they do, but he tells of his um, people's past um, through a crystal um, that pretty much absorbs the souls of anyone around him um, that touches the crystal. So it's it's like a live video diary, I suppose you'd call it. Um, so yeah, that's that's how the idea came about, and the actual first novel, which is only a hundred pages, unfortunately, the uh, publisher decided that was the best format to put it out there. Split the first novel in two, um, give a hundred page story in one, and the next four hundred and fifty pages to follow. Whoa. Um, yeah, that's sort of it's sort of um, it works well at the moment because a lot of fifteen year olds, as Michael knows. Um, I think he was about 15 when <laughs> he first got the book. Absolutely loved the first 100 pages because it's a, it's a good read, um, quick read. What do you reckon, Michael? Yeah, I mean, I liked it a lot. You know, it was fantastic. I was looking forward to it for, what, two weeks while, <laughs> while it was in the mail? Yeah, he, um, kept, he, he kept texting me, dude, when's it coming, when's it coming, when's it coming? <laughs> Yes, and uh, I got a very nice autographed copy. Thank you very much. And oh, then you also included this really cool art, like piece of artwork. It's like a postcard size, and it has you know the star crystal on the back, and then it's got this picture of what looks like claws holding this crystal. Ah, uh, yeah, the um, anime version. Anime yes. Eric. Guy, yeah, draw that up for me. I coloured it in very roughly, so it looks yeah. really cool. Sweet, but 
but yeah, so yeah, the star crystal, yeah, pretty much it's um, strays, which are feline humanoids, um, half strays, which are scrags. Um, it's it's their struggle to uh, find their home planet um, and keep it. Um, the company's hot on their tail, um, and the company has no issue whatsoever in uh, taking that planet back um, by any means necessary. But there's there's a there's quite a bit of darkness in it. However, you know, it's got a lot of humour in it as well to sort of uh, balance it out. So, do you um, have you had anyone uh, do any images, any pictures of uh, um, th- your feline characters? Um, my feline characters. I actually have two images um, from Shelley McCaw. She's actually a local. Um, down here, one of my biggest fans. Um, she's done two of Teller actually, and they actually look quite good. Um, I haven't had any official images done yet. Saying that, I'm going to post those ones on Facebook in the next couple of weeks. Toon Lancer, um, he's from DeviantArt. He's actually a guy I f- trained with at Fight Choreography as well. He actually came up to me and said, "Dude, have you thought about getting your dragon drawn up?" And I said, "Well, I have the very basic image of what I wanted him to look like." or what I seen him look like in my head and he took that and um, put it into an image and then we batted the idea around did around about four or five different versions of him until we finally come up with one that we both felt suited the character then my kids overrode my decision and went with the cuter one because uh, they said no Blink is cute you can't have Blink looking like a little semi alligator slash dragon so that was like, mm, yeah, okay. And Cute's definitely worked. But um, Toon Lancer, he's an absolutely brilliant artist. Um, and then it worked. It, I mean, the, the T-shirt is just, I mean, it looks awesome. Oh, I, know, I love it. Yeah, those T-shirts. I sold, I think, 10 in a week of the uh, Blink T-shirts. I actually ran out at the convention I went to um, of the coloured Blinks. So I've got another nine sitting here now. So that's, yeah, definitely cute. And it was a brilliant selling point at the convention because all I did was hold up the little blink picture and go, shiny, and I had just women coming over, Um, young girls, women. um, Even some of the guys were like, oh, really, shiny. So, you know, I just went into the spiel about the book and um, I actually sold 67 copies at the convention I just went to recently, which isn't a huge amount, but at all the conventions I've been to, it's uh, tripled my sales, actually. Um, enough, the image on the front of the book actually has got a lot of feedback as well. Um, that was, I think, around about 10 different versions to get that. Originally, they started off with an egg, and oh, I didn't I want to ups- yeah. I didn't, and I didn't want to upset the publisher and say, "Dude, seriously, why have we got an egg on the cover?" <laughs> um, and I, I showed it to a couple of people at work, and they said, "Dude, what's this egg on the cover? I thought it was the star crystal." And I'm like, "Oh, thank God, it just wasn't me." <laughs> so I sent him an email and said, "Look, dude, I really appreciate the fact that you've done the cover, and it looks quite nice. However, it's not the star egg; it's the star crystal. Could we maybe put a crystal in there?" So, yeah, so it came out quite well. And it's it's funny how uh, fate works a little bit. I've actually got a crystal I ordered the day I got the publishing contract that actually looks like a crystalline fragment of a crystalline tree, which is what the whole idea of the star crystal is. It's actually a crystalline fragment broken off a crystal tree from the original home planet. Right. So I've got that plastered up all over my website but that looks really cool especially in video i have three cats i had four before um and apart from the main character because he modeled himself you know straight out of my head and i've, I've seen him as an image since day one um i actually have several of the characters that have taken on the characteristics of my cats at home um so it's sort of like the, the idea of them being called strays was pretty much because they got created um, by the creator, as I call him, um, in the image of cats because he wanted someone or a race to worship him in an affectionate way. Um, not in a, I have to. Do you know how a, a dog's devoted to you and, right. um, you know, everything you say goes with a dog? It's like you say, 
you know, sit, it sits, you say beg, it begs, you give it food and it'll, it'll wag its tail forever. With a cat, you give it food and it'll love you for 30 seconds. <laughs> you know, then it'll decide to run off and do whatever it wants and then you forget to feed it the next day and it bites you. Well, sort of, that that's the embodiment of the strays. Um, they are very affectionate and everything else, but they will not worship someone. Um, they're very proud race. Um, however, they have been downtrodden by the company and they are actually spread across the um, system. Um, and Skriker, which is the captain, I keep referring to him as a Johnny Depp type character, but I'm not sure if that's completely true. He's the, uh, you know, the smuggler, pirate, um, trying to... Um, is trying to fulfil his fam family's um, lineage um, goal quest in re reuniting the strays back on their home planet. Um, however, he's got to do a lot of really nasty things to get there, and you know, it, it's it's like everyday life. You've got to earn money. You've got to get things happening in order to actually get somewhere you know it's not black and white life is not black and white and you know i, I see that with my books so <clears throat> sorry i'm losing my voice now <laughs> it's been, basically been sick for a week with the flu so it was a really good convention last weekend um supernova in perth here um i probably didn't talk for about 15 minutes on both days and that was just enough time to get some food in me around <laughs> about 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Um, absolutely brilliant weekend. The people there are fantastic. The cosplayers are great. Um, yeah, i got to say, every, every convention I've ever been to has always been it's just wonderful. I, if, if you're out there and you're listening to this and you haven't been to some sort of sci-fi sci convention or even an anime convention or something like that, or a GE3, that, that would be really cool. Go to some sort of convention that you're into and just you'll be surprised at how wonderfully rich uh, the atmosphere is and how, how fun it can be to meet people who are interested in the same things you are. Yeah, definitely. Hey, Michael. Yeah? You lost it. Where are you? <laughs> I'm here. I'm listening. <laughs> what do you think of the book? Of your book? Was, I mean, I told you. That. <laughs> you, could you well, tell me in a few few uh, sentences? <laughs> well, I mean, you know, I don't want to spoil it for Grin, uh, but you know, I just I, let me put it this way: I love all the space scenes. I love the the way the ships, you know, the ship is described and such. Um, but what I really, I just, I want to know what's next. That's what I really want is to know what's next and. I know you said that you were going to um, let me beta read the second. So, <laughs> as, Two days uh, ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, two days ago. So wait, this book, uh, the book one is only 100 pages? Yes. Hmm. It's, it's yeah, a shorter the, book, um, but you know, it's still good. Interesting. Yeah, the publisher, <laughs> he did me an injustice and maybe he did me a justice, as I said, because... Um, a lot of the 15-year-olds picking it up and just pummeling through it and coming to the end of it and just going, God, I love this. I really, really love this. Um, however, saying that where it ends, it can be classed as a, as a complete story. However, it just gets to the point where um, it allows it to flow a lot more. Um, the first 100 pages were pretty much a prologue almost to the rest of the um, series. Um, Actually, so I, I think that's a perfect idea. I think uh, in this case, your your publisher did a wonderful thing. This gives you time to to uh, sort of push the book, get it out there, and and market it. And it's only a hundred pages, so it's a fairly easy read. And uh, I'm I'm guessing that it's not too expensive either. No, I actually, um, personally, I've dropped it down to $10 locally um, just to get the, my name out there. I believe it's 15 online from America. Um, but if anyone wants a signed copy, um, um, as um, a couple of the other guys, I've sold them to Canada and everything else. Um, I've just been um, selling them for 15 or $16 just to cover the cost of postage um, to get them over there. So you know, if so somebody wants a signed copy, how would they get that from you? 
Um, just contact me either via my uh, web page or my Facebook page and that, and um, I'll get the details off. And then what all I do is just set up a, a one-off transaction um, on PayPal. Um, I've done that quite a bit, actually. Um, and at the end of the day, I'm quite happy to lose a couple of dollars a book to get my book out there and get people reading it because, you know, I know they're going to want to want to read Bok too. As Michael said, I think he's been waiting for it for about, what was it, 18, <laughs> 19 months now. Like he's going, every couple of months, he's like, dude, 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 seriously, where's book two? And I'm like, yeah, 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 it's written. And it was written at the same time. That's what's so painful about it. Michael, your um, poetry site, Facebook site, how is that going? Wait, me? Yeah, your poetry, <laughs> Facebook. I seen it the uh, other sorry. day. How's it yeah, going? Yeah, um, well, uh, to be totally honest, you know, I, I was I put it out there to tr hoping to get a bit more people. Right now, I'm fat. Got what? Uh, hold on, it's loading. Ninety-seven likes so far. Um, good. Yeah, it's it's going good. I have the problem. The problem is that I've had a lot of like stagnant. Um time periods where just I you know for a while I was you know writing yeah I wrote maybe 10 poems in a couple months uh and then it took a while then I wrote another one I, I don't know three months ago and then another break and right now I'm actually in the middle of one that I've been working on for I'd say two and a half weeks um and then I've got another one with an idea in my head um first one's called home second one is called destiny and um not the video game destiny no not the video game though that, <laughs> looks, looks, that looks that looks that looks amazing um yeah. no it's not the video game it's more about like fate and such can, can you uh, really the difference with poetry is that it's not so much a co cohesive you know story you can write about anything and it you're and it's completely it's like complete freedom and uh i just always found that i don't i started out because in elementary school they make you do some poetry i started out doing haikus and everything very simple very structured but nowadays i write completely you know um freestyle and everything and uh yeah it's just i like to be able to tell my own you know, yeah, you know, voice my own opinions and stories through the poetry. I didn't even think it was still here, but here it is. Wow. <laughs> yeah, there, yeah, there's another Wait, what what site is that? Allpoetry.com. I haven't heard of that one. I've I'm on poetry.com. It's slightly different, but yeah. Yeah. It's I'm sure it's very similar. Yeah, <laughs> I can't find one of mine. <laughs> Terribly, <laughs> terrible, terrible, terrible. Oh wow! I even have a script from my very first version of uh, my first book on there. Holy cow! Let's see. This this is what I get for using um a new operating system, just as I'm doing a podcast. <laughs> Okay, let's start with yours while I try to find mine. <laughs> yeah, did you did you see uh, GB's comment, Grin, on the live stream? He's like, "How do we get to poetry?" <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna do quick fire questions. Oh wow! <laughs> All right, so this is right. My Michael and Danny, and I'm going to ask a question. You have to answer as quickly as possible and uh, see where what what. Your answers are how closely you guys match. All right. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, answer as quickly as possible. All right. First one. Your favorite sci-fi book. The Star Crystal. <laughs> God, Grin, really? <laughs> <laughs> there are so you're running you have out no of idea. time. You have no idea how many books I have. Okay, Freedom's Landing. Freedom's Landing. All right. And McCaffrey. <laughs> oh yeah, also yeah, yeah. I remember that. I, I love the Star Crystal, Danny, but I'm sorry. <laughs> no, that's all right, mate. I, I sort of, he said answer straight away. <laughs> yeah, yeah, answer straight away. You get, you, strongest starship captain. John Sheridan. 
<laughs> um, the first guy from the first season of Babylon Five. I don't know his name. Alan Sinclair. I ah. That's, the two, like, so so it's the two, two the two Babylon Five captains up against each other. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Babylon Five for the win. Your favorite sci-fi villain. Ooh. Well, that's a hard one. Alien. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to go with uh, Khan. Um, you know, from... The original? Oh, uh, ooh, ooh, jeez. Okay, uh, in, in character, like, background and, you know, the, the on-screen character um, would be the original, but... The actor would be the new one. Would be Cumberbatch. I loved Cum- I love Benedict Cumberbatch's acting. So uh, I think he plays a better character than Ricardo Montalban. But because of the way it was written and the way his character was written in this movie, I prefer the original one. Your favorite uh, sci-fi technology transporter replicator <laughs> you've ever seen. Has to be a movie, right? Not a series. Okay, series is good. A series and movie. Okay, it has to be Star Hunter. I'm sorry that it was it was a Canadian one that they've remade. Supposedly it's supposed to be better now, but it was it was just horrible. Star Hunter. Okay, what you got there, Danny? Uh, I'm no good with names. There was this one I watched. Um, Especially when it's the worst trans, one you've ever trans, seen. <laughs> Transmorphers, I think it was. The concept was brilliant, but all oh, the acting was so bad. <laughs> the special effects. It's like, what were they doing? What sci-fi movie or series are you most looking forward to? The Star Crystal. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. One million points for Danny. <laughs> um, uh, uh, um, um, whew. Movie has to be uh, right as of this moment. Um, has gotta be uh, Elysium. Uh, the Pacific Rim looks pretty good. Um, oh, then the you, other did one. Did you know there's a Atlantic Rim movie? It, are you serious? Yeah. They, oh some, my god. <laughs> talking about spinoffs, right? <laughs> <They've>, <laughs> some group made this movie called Atlantic Rim, and yeah, it's about. Robots and and monsters. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! But the series I've got I've got to say I'm most looking forward to is gonna have to be um, the next season of Falling Skies. I haven't seen season two yet. Looking forward. Well, to they're that. on season three now, Danny. Jeez. Uh, dude, we're Australian. <laughs> we're so far behind. I think I will. Hey, at, least, at least your Sci-Fi Network still calls itself Sci-Fi. Yeah, did, didn't we change our name though? We're SC Wi-Fi and you're S Wi-Fi. Is it? Re- did it change at all? I thought you guys um, hadn't changed. Don't know. I haven't watched it for a while. I must admit, I'm actually enjoying. I mean, it's on the Sci-Fi Network, but it's not actually um, really Sci-Fi. It's the Almighty Johnsons. It's an Australian production, and they're all Almighty uh, Johnsons. Gods. Yeah, I've never they're heard all of that. Gods. They're all gods in human in uh, Kiwi's bodies. They're all living Kiwi land. <laughs> it's so <laughs> funny. It's so funny. And they've got to ascend. <laughs> so it's not really sci-fi, but it's so funny. It's so wrong. It's so funny. <laughs> oh, Aussie sense of humour. As soon as I seen the title, I'm like, yeah, I'm not going to watch this. <laughs> All right, so we're going to wrap up, and uh, to let you know, everybody, th- this has been the Save Sci-Fi Podcast. Uh, my name is Grin. I'm your main host, and our co-host was Michael. Hey, Michael. Hey, guys. And our guest was Danny Danes. His new book, or his book, actually, is The Star Crystal. You can find it on, uh, you can find it in many different places. So where can we find The Star Crystal, Danny? Okay. Amazon um, at my publisher's website, Akashic. Um, I also have my website, www.thestarcrystal.com, and a Facebook page as well. Um, you can also uh, private text me in that and get me to send you a signed copy. Um, just organize payment through PayPal with you. 
All right, thank you very much for watching and listening, and we'll see you next time on the Save Sci-Fi Podcast.